Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the good news, beloved. The grave is empty. Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join in our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, printed on the insert in your bulletin. You are invited to rise on your feet or in your hearts and sing God's praise this morning. You may be seated. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Easter. After six weeks of journeying through the wilderness of Lent, we have finally arrived at this hallelujah-filled celebration of our Lord Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, Jesus, God's anointed and beloved child. Say it with me one more time. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's keep practicing that. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We, we can't ever say that enough. We have officially begun the great 50-day season of Eastertide, which is why I said it's the first Sunday of Easter. That's right, there's many more, so keep up the practicing. Um, we will celebrate the wonders of the resurrection, not just today, but every Sunday until Pentecost on May 19th. You can even celebrate it every day if you want. There are no limits to rejoicing in all that Jesus has done. Amen? One more time, amen? amen. <laughs> right, Make, come on Presbyterians. Um, <clears throat> welcome to all who are here in person in our sanctuary and welcome to those who are joining us online via our live stream on Facebook. It is so good to be together and to see old and new faces once again on this special day. And there, as I... My, one of my yoga instructors has been reminding me there's lots of places you could be. You've made a choice to be here, and I'm so glad and grateful that the Spirit has led you here to Newton Presbyterian Church this Sunday. I'm Reverend Tom Reed, and I am the pastor here. Um, and here in this church, we believe and we live out God's truth every Sunday and every day of the week that God invites all people into relationship and to participate fully in the life of this congregation, whatever your skin color, whatever your gender identity, however old or young you are, whomever you love, you are beloved, and God welcomes you here. You are in the right place. If you are new to Newton Presbyterian Church and are interested in more information about our congregation, there are yellow pew cards in the back of your pew. They look like this. You can fill those in and leave those in the offering plate and someone from our congregation will be in touch with you and we will add you to our weekly mailing list with information about the life of our congregation. And for those online, if you go to our website, up in the upper right hand corner, there's a contact us link. You can again fill in your information and we will be in touch and love to learn more about you and share about our, our wonderful community here. Um, and for those joining us online, please also take a moment to greet one another in the chat. It's love, fun to share. Where are you joining us from in worship? You know, we're here in Newton, Massachusetts. Where are you? Uh, and it's, oh, you can lift up prayer requests. You can respond at any point in time in worship. It's a wonderful way to be connected, even if we are physically separated. As um, I have been reminding us, um, the, our Muslim siblings continue their praying and fasting during the holy month of Ramadan. So we continue to wish a Ramadan Mubarak, a holy and beautiful Ramadan to our Muslim siblings at this sacred time of year for them as well. This is also the last day of Women's History Month, and we continue to give thanks to all the important women in our lives who impact us in so many ways. And we give thanks for the women at the center of today's Easter story, the foundation of our Christian faith. Thanks be to God for them who were the first to discover the resurrection and who we trust shared the news that has brought us to this day. And we give thanks for all who identify as women May, they, can, may we continue our work as a society and a world to better honor, respect, empower, and care for all women everywhere. Amen? Amen. I want to give a warm welcome as well to our musicians. We have, uh, it's, a, it's such a gift to have Easter Brass this morning. So first, our very own Nat Penn, who is leading this group, and then we have KJ 
I should have asked to pronounce it Kar Karapetkov. Awesome. All right. <laughs> on trumpet, and Bo Johnson on euphonium, and as always, our regular face and incredible talent, Anran on keyboard, if you will, on piano. Um, so let's give a round of applause and gratitude for the wonderful gift of music this morning. And are there any, oh, be sure to check your bulletin for upcoming activities. We have a lively um, breakfast club that meets before church on Sunday mornings doing Bible study or reading and conversation about things important to us and our faith as Christians, and seekers, Folks who have all the answers, folks who have all the questions, everyone is welcome to join in those one rich conversations. Um, we also have a Wednesday evening uh, prayer service that meets in our chapel and on Zoom in partnership with our friends and siblings at Church of the Covenant in Boston's Back Bay. Are there any other announcements to lift up this morning? All right, so before Dave leads us in our prayer of confession, let us pause as is our regular practice in this community. Let us center ourselves and arrive fully in this space. In his resurrection appearances, Jesus speaks words of peace to his disciples and then breathes on them, saying, receive the Holy Spirit. So on this day, when we celebrate Christ's wondrous triumph over death, let us also remember his spirit, his ruach, his sacred breath, and his words of peace to us. You can close your eyes if you feel comfortable and take a deep breath in and exhale. As we breathe in, you can envision the words, breathe in peace, and as you exhale, breathe out love. Try that one more time. Breathe in peace and breathe out love. You may open your eyes if you've closed them. And one more time, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us continue our worship of the risen Lord. Good morning. My name is Dave Penn. I am an elder here. I'm happy to be leading worship with everyone. It's great to see all the faces out there and Alex that just came in. Seeing if I could get an early piece. Maybe. We'll wait till actual peace sharing is a little early for that. Uh, I invite you to join me in the call to confession as printed in the bulletin. Even in the joy of resurrection, we do not forget the anguish of our sins. We pray together in confession and lament. Risen one, we confess our silence amid the persecution of others. Silence that has often complied with oppression and brought harm. What can we do to eradicate poverty, war, hunger, and homelessness? Help us to hear your voice above all others and teach us how to care for our neighbor, feed the hungry, pursue peace, and clothe and care for those in need. For as we do these things unto one another, we do them also unto you. Friends, in the joy of the resurrection, we claim the victory of Christ over the power of sin. God has rolled away the stone to reveal our salvation. We look inside the tomb and where Jesus once lay lifeless, we find the gifts of God's grace and forgiveness. Let us go and tell the world, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen.
So unlike at the first Easter, we have friends joining us virtually from afar. So let's, before we share the peace, let's share the peace. There's a camera back there. That's why I'm not, I'm just not just waving at David. Um, so peace to you who are joining us across time and space. And now in the sanctuary, the peace of Christ be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Let us share Christ's peace. Good morning. Um, My name is Allison Penn. I am one of the deacons here at Noon Presbyterian. Um, I'm not sure who was supposed to do the moment for mission, but I thought that I would come on up and share about, yes, about one great hour of sharing. Um, So we have these fish banks that some of our young or young at heart people have been using to collect um, little bits of money that goes to the Presbyterian disaster assistance, right? Yes, okay, I I, I always make sure that that is (laughs) what it stands for. Um, But it's one of the the four offerings we take during the year. Um, So this, what goes into the one great hour of sharing, or you may have seen envelopes um, as you've come in, this goes towards the National Presbyterian um, Organization and they collect all of these and then it goes out to help um, people who are experiencing disaster in our world. Um, that could be local, it could be far away, um, but that's where that money is going. So if you feel so called to contribute to that, there are those envelopes, or you can just write it on any other envelope so we know where to designate it. Um, also with this, just as a reminder, since next week is the, um, is the first Sunday of April, we have communion, and we always um, remember those who, as we come to the, our table, for communion, we remember those who may not have enough. And this um, this month and next month, we are collecting boxes of mac, mac and cheese for the uh, Center Street Food Pantry here in Newton, we, who we regularly support. So please feel free to bring those at any time during the month of April. Um, and if we are not collecting them up front, you can leave them through this door in the fireplace room. Anything to add 
just going to add that if when the offering time comes, I'm going to have our fish basket here. And if you did happen to bring in your fish bank, I'm happy to collect those. And we can gather up our basket of fish this morning. So thank you, Allison. Can I invite our young people up to the front, please? River. Oh my goodness. I may have to not have a spot with some room. Oh my goodness. Good morning, everyone. You can sit, you sit right wherever you feel comfortable, but make, there's plenty of room. Good morning. So, what is today? Can anybody tell me what day? What is today? Easter, any other answers? That's a good answer. That's the right answer. Easter? It's Sunday as well. Yes, that is very correct. And yes? You get to do the egg hunt today. And I forgot to mention that in the announcements. You can join us. Thank you for that. I, I paid him. Um, uh, you can join us after worship for fellowship time. And the young and young at heart are invited to an Easter egg hunt. So stay tuned. Um, so what, what is Easter? Does anybody remember? What happens on Easter? Easter egg hunt. Easter egg hunt, yes. <laughs> yes? The Easter Bunny comes, yes. Anything related to church? <laughs> he is risen, yes. It's the day we remember that Jesus rose from the dead. We re- you remember last Sunday we read through the whole story that leads up to Jesus dying, and we, ha- we end sort of on that to be continued note, but then this morning we get to remember that Jesus, that God raised Jesus from the dead, that the story doesn't end with that really sad news. We have joyous news today. And then during the season of Lent, this year our, se- our theme has been seed of joy, and we've been talking about different kinds of joy. And um, do you, who, who could, what does the word joy mean? Anyone? Yes. You can feel joy if you're happy. Yes, Azure? You're not very comfortable here. Do you want to sit here? We've got a nice cushion for you. Awesome. That sounds like a good searching for joy. I like it. Um, Any other? What what, what does joy mean to you? Do you have an example of when you felt joy? Anybody out in the crowd? I'll open it up. Any, any, who's, who has an example of joy? Yes, Mamie. That is an amazing example. When Ethan was our Jesus in reading the Passion Story and did an amazing job, I definitely felt a lot of joy then too, so thank you. I think our, also our Hosanna banner was a pretty awesome example of, of uh, the, our youth coming together, Mamie bringing their artistic skills and doing an incredible addition to our Palm Sunday service. Any other joys, examples? Man, y'all, come on. Yes. Walking in the building and hearing the gospel was so refreshing, and I'm so glad to be here. Also, I mean, instruments. Also, yes, so brass instruments, beautiful music in our sanctuary, and seeing all these wonderful faces, definitely good examples of joy. So... On today, on Easter Sunday, I want you guys to think about joy, and if you're up for it, I'm inviting your, perhaps you can ask your parents to find a journal for you or some uh, notepad or something, and you can, throughout these 50 days of Easter that we're starting, if you could every day take a moment, and maybe at the end of the day, and write down one person, a place, or event, or Anything that brought you joy that day. Does that sound like something you, you can do, that you want to do? Parents, do we have support? Guardians, friends, neighbors? Can we help these, these beautiful young people do a little gratitude inventory and just write down when did you feel joy today? And then when we get to Pentecost, we can maybe revisit these. And I'll try to remind you during the weeks, okay? All right, can you, will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending us Jesus to show the whole world God's love. 
Help us to follow and learn from Jesus. I can't hear anybody down here. And to tell the story. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you all for coming up. You can go hang out in the playground or go back to your families, whatever you want to do. The playground? Go right ahead, as long as your mom's okay. <laughs> All right, please, as we continue our worship and prepare to hear God's word for us today, please join me in a spirit of prayer. Divine Redeemer, bearer of life, open us to the wisdom of your word today and enlighten us with your truth. Liberate us from all that distracts us and turns us from your path. Guide us and ground us in Christ's everlasting hope. And let all God's people say together, Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. If you would like to follow along in the Bibles that are in the back of the pews, it is on page 565 in those. I had a fun little pink marker, so it didn't take me very long. So I'll, I'll give you just a second if you're looking it up. <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And the Lord will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. God will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our responsive psalm is from Psalm 118, the first two verses, and 14 through 24, and it is printed in your bulletin. I invite you to join me responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 10 verses 34 through 43 in the Bible, on the, in the pews, that is on page 891. <clears throat> then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. 
that message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him, drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And our gospel reading for this morning, we, um, we come back to the gospel according to Mark once again, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Here ends our readings for this morning. May God add a blessing to our understanding of these texts, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God of resurrection and of new beginnings, let your glorious light shine in our midst this morning. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy Easter again, everyone. We have been on a journey like we do every year. Six weeks ago on Valentine's Day, in fact, we stepped into Lent with our Ash Wednesday service and the imposition of ashes. We made our way through all 40 days plus six Sundays. We waved the palms last Sunday as we remembered Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then we read together the passion story that led to Jesus' crucifixion and death. Then on Thursday, 
We remembered the Last Supper and celebrated communion together here in our chapel. Friday, we relived Jesus' final moments in the flesh, hearing once again his last words from the cross as recounted in the four different gospel accounts. Silently, we left the sanctuary in darkness after hearing Reverend Joshua's booming voice speak the painful words, let us leave this place in silence, for Jesus is dead. Then on Saturday, yesterday we sat in the painful silence. We waited for sunset when we lit the new flame and from it lit our paschal candles, sharing the light of Christ and processing into the sanctuary, shouting together the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. It has been a journey. And we arrive here today on this day of resurrection when we celebrate the good news that lies at the heart of our faith as followers of the way, as followers of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one of God. We whom later adopted the title of Christians. But where do we find ourselves today, beloved? Mark's gospel account that we just read is a challenging one. The writer is brief and to the point throughout the entire gospel. And what we read today is actually the original ending of the gospel, believe it or not. Our Bible has additional verses, but scholars universally agree in one of those rare moments that these were later additions in the second and fourth centuries based on the style of the Greek and the theology captured within these additional words. Perhaps they were added by those who felt too uncomfortable with a gospel that ends with, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. But fear, beloved, is an ordinary, everyday thing in our human existence. To tie in my title earlier than I usually do in my sermons. As much as we want and as nice as it is to have Easter be about trumpets and French horns and euphoniums and lilies and shouting alleluia together, Easter is messier and more complicated than that. I've had a quote stuck in my head since the welcome remarks at the Tenebrae service on Good Friday just two days ago. The quote was from, from Reverend Quinn Caldwell, who used to serve as associate pastor of Boston's Old South Church. Writing about Good Friday, Reverend Caldwell calls it, quote, a day when an utterly normal thing happened. End quote. A strange thing to say about a crucifixion, no? Reverend Caldwell continues, quote, occupation, colonization, execution, miscarriages of justice, the collusion of state and religion, betrayal for money, public execution, mothers watching their sons be killed, suffering, tears. In human history and in the world today, these are the norm, not the exception, end quote. It was a jarring thing to hear, but one that is painfully true. These are everyday things in our world, maybe not to us, and in ways that we see in our daily lives, but that doesn't make them any less real. Earlier on Friday afternoon, I marched through the streets of Boston with Reverend Kate Carlisle, the stated clerk of our presbytery, and Reverend Sarah Hathaway, a chaplain also within the presbytery of Boston, and Gracie, and many members of the clergy in Boston and lay Christians alike demonstrating our 
collective demand for a ceasefire in Gaza, for an end to the relentless bombings, attacks, and restrictions, and complete cutting off of basic life-sustaining supplies, such as food and water, that are leading to mass starvation, malnutrition, and that are threatening to bring full-scale famine to the Gaza Strip. People in Israel continue to mourn the 1,200 innocent people who were murdered on, in October and the Israeli soldiers who continue to be killed in the ongoing and horrifically imbalanced genocidal conflict. This is only one current example in our world, a world where such stories and statistics are too common, too ordinary, too everyday. When we read the gospel narrative, I am struck by the ordinariness of the details. Having dutifully and patiently waited to care for the body of their beloved friend and teacher, Mary, Mary, and Salome gather up the materials they will need to do the work of preparing Jesus' body for a proper burial. This is traditionally the work of women, according to Jewish custom. They gather up spices and, I imagine, water, clean cloth, or towels. And at the first light, they make their way to the tomb. Mark tells us in the previous chapter from what we read in chapter 15 that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were the ones who stayed and watched as Joseph of Arimathea, who had petitioned Pilate to take possession of Jesus' body and remove it from the cross to a proper resting place, that tomb with a great big stone at the entrance. Because these women stayed and watched and waited, they knew where to go to find Jesus. In the midst of all they have endured over the last 48 hours or so, on their way to the tomb, they wonder about another practical seemingly mundane issue. How are they going to roll away the stone in order to get into the tomb to tend to Jesus' body? It seems strange that they would go all the way there without a plan to deal with the stone, but perhaps linear, rational, logical thinking is not to be expected in the midst of trauma, brutal executions, terrorism, and fear. Yet these three faithful women persist and journey to the tomb where they are shocked to find that the stone has already been rolled away. Now I say this every year, but I believe it is critically important to try and put ourselves in the shoes or sandals, rather, of the people in the Easter story. For those of us who come to church every Easter, for those of us who are familiar with these stories and the various gospel accounts, it is very easy to forget that we have the advantage of knowing how the story ends. We've already shouted, Alleluia, he has risen this morning. We have the benefit of 2,000 years of hindsights, tombs and stones rolled away, and angels or men in white telling us not to be afraid, that Jesus is not here, that he has been raised. We already know all that. Of course he has been raised. That's old news. This is why our remembrance of Holy Week and journeying through the days and the stories is important and is a helpful practice to cultivate. It's easy to jump into trumpets and hallelujahs. It's beautiful and it's exciting. It's such a nice place to be. Look around. It's a nice place to be. But there's more to the story. And we can't fully appreciate what happened nor its meaning without connecting it to the whole story. Mary, 
Mary and Salome stood at a distance and watched their beloved friend and teacher be executed by the power of empire. Crucifixion was not your average, everyday, run-of-the-mill form of execution. It was very public. It was intended to terrorize the population and serve as a deterrent. And it was reserved for enemies or those who posed a threat to the Roman Empire. According to Mark's account, the women were the only ones of the disciples who stayed at Jesus' side as he died and afterwards. They were the ones who insisted on being there with him and watching over him as best they could after he died. And they went to the tomb in the midst of death and grief, expecting more death. But they were greeted by something else, something that alarmed them, that caused them to fear. One more thing on top of all they had suffered in the past days. But the mysterious man in white meets them where they are in that very moment, and he tells them not to be afraid. Do not worry. Your worst fears are not coming true. Nothing more bad has happened to Jesus' body. No one has stolen it. No one is preventing you from giving a proper burial to your dear friend. No, the truth is actually beyond your wildest dreams. And truth be told, the truth of the resurrection left these first witnesses unsettled. They did not immediately shout, Alleluia, he is risen. Even though Jesus told the disciples over and over again what was going to happen, these first hearers weren't able to instantly grab on to the truth of resurrection. They were bewildered and afraid. Go tell his disciples, the man says. Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee and you will see him there. Just as he told you, he even notes. But the women flee the tomb in amazement and they said nothing. The exact opposite of what the man told him, told them to do. It's a completely understandable reaction, no? Seeing some nods. How would you have responded? How would, how would we respond now if something like this were to happen again today? Would we instantly believe it? Or would we question what we are seeing and experiencing? Would we wonder if we're hallucinating or losing it altogether? This is impossible, unbelievable, scary stuff. And we are wise to remember how truly incredible and unbelievable it would have seemed to these first witnesses. The Christian Century contributor, Reverend Dr. Timothy Adkins Jones, professor of homiletics or preaching, to use the more familiar term, at Union Theological Seminary, writes that, quote, God always seems to do things the hard way, end quote. These women saw Jesus suffer and die. Then when they go to the tomb, he was gone. A stranger tells them that the impossible has happened in the midst of their terror and grief, and they're supposed to believe. Quoting Dr. Adkins Jones again, why doesn't God allow them to come to the tomb and watch Jesus walk out into the light of a new day? Wouldn't it be easier for us if we could see Jesus simply appear? Wouldn't it? But that's not the way God works. And believing in the obvious or showing up and saying an alleluia, singing a hymn and saying a prayer alone is not what the resurrection nor Christian faith is about. No, the story at the heart of our faith is the story of a God who loved us so much that God would do the impossible to be with us, to be for us. Despite our repeated failures to be truly faithful to God and loving to our neighbors, despite the oppressive systems that we create that benefit some at the expense of others, that commoditize resources and life and relationships to the detriment of all, 
despite our willingness to sacrifice individuals for the convenience of preserving the status quo, God's desire is always to say yes to us, to believe in us, that we can be and do better, to call us back into relationship, back into oneness. Jesus gave us a new commandment that we love one another as he has loved us. He said we will be known as Christians by the love we share with each other and all those around us. Sinner, saint, immigrant, citizen, rich, poor, trans, cis, non-binary, homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, black, white, brown, all. It's a simple message, but one that is so challenging, so subversive, so dangerous that it warranted Jesus' execution. Jesus was a threat to empire because he preached peace and love and relationship and just systems that protect and care for all rather than the survival of the fittest or success of the powerful or the rich or the ruthless or the deceitful. The cross is about human beings doing the worst we can do to one another. Jesus demonstrated his willingness to endure our darkest instincts and our cruelest, most selfish tendencies in order to triumph over them and teach us a new way of life, a new way of living, a new way of being in relationship. And if we really believe in this resurrection, we must believe it in our core. Quoting Reverend Dr. Adkins Jones again, you can't halfway believe in resurrection. Either Jesus got up from the grave or he didn't. And if we really believe that he got up, then that belief should transform our every day. Who we are and what we do has to be different because of the resurrection. So as Reverend Caldwell reminded us, about Good Friday, Jesus' death on a cross was brought by normal, everyday things. Things we don't want to admit are so commonplace in our world today. Death, greed, injustice, collusion, capital punishment, hate in all its many forms, racism, anti-immigrant hate, homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and the list goes on. But resurrection seeks to transform our every day if we are able to believe in the good news. On this day, 2,000 or so years ago, our forebears in faith encountered the resurrection in all its impossibility in the midst of fear and hate and injustice. They didn't have the benefit of knowing what we know today. They fled in fear and silence, understandably so, not knowing what to do. And yet, the story lives on in us today. Mary and Mary and Salome found their voices. Thanks be to God. They found their courage. They were able to overcome their fear and tell the story the story that we have come to know in our time. Now on this Easter Sunday, it is our turn to wrestle with the impossibility of the, of the resurrection, to understand the fears that cause us to flee in silence, that keep us from embracing our call to tell the good news, to preach the gospel with our lives, and to use words when we have to. They will know we are Christians by our love, beloved. So let's get to loving. And let's make that the predominant everyday thing in our lives and our world. Amen.
As we continue our worship responding to the word read and proclaimed, let us join in singing our sermonic hymn, which is on your insert again, Woman, woman Weeping in the Garden. We'll sing verses 1 through 4. Please be seated. I'll invite Vanderlei and representatives of session and our deacons up for this wonderful part of Christian life where we get to welcome a new member into the life of our congregation. On behalf of the session, I present Vanderlei Correa dos Santos, who has been received into the membership of this congregation by transfer from Manaheim Evangelical Church. In baptism, you were claimed by God, marked as Christ's own forever, and joined to his body by the Holy Spirit. You come to us then, not as a stranger, but as a friend in Christ and member of the household of God. We rejoice that you now desire to join with this congregation in the worship and mission of the church. Hear these words from scripture, Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. As members of the body of Christ, let us reaffirm the faith into which we were all baptized using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I will invite everyone to stand on your feet or on, in your hearts and join in reading as printed in your bulletin. We do have it in Portuguese and English, and I invite you to try out your Portuguese to, to do this ancient, to recite this ancient creed together. Creio em Deus Pai, todo poderoso, criador do céu e da terra. Creio em Jesus Cristo, seu único filho, nosso Senhor, o qual foi concebido por obra do Espírito Santo, nasceu da Virgem Maria, Padeceu sob o poder do Pôncio Pilatos. Foi crucificado, morto e sepultado. Ressurgiu dos mortos ao terceiro dia. Subiu ao céu, 
está sentado à direita de Deus, Pai Todo-Poderoso, donde há de vir para julgar os vivos e os mortos. Creio no Espírito Santo, na Santa Igreja Universal, na comunhão dos santos, na remissão dos pecados, na ressurreição do corpo, na vida eterna. Amém. You may be seated, beloved. Vanderlei, we have professed our faith as one body, and now I have some questions for you, or a question. A question. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and mission through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will, with God's help. I will, with God's help. And now I invite everyone to raise a hand in an ancient sign of blessing as we pray. Holy God, Thank you for calling us to be your people and joining us to Christ's body, the church. We praise you for leading Vanderlei to this congregation. Empower us by your spirit that we might love one another as Christ loved us, honoring him in all that we say and do, giving our lives in service to others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And let all God's people say together, amen. All right, and one more thing. Did you hold it for me for one second? I forgot to bring a towel. Yeah. <laughs> Vandalay, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you. Mm-hmm. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we have to be careful. Welcome to this ministry that we share in Jesus Christ. And now we have shared the peace already, but let's share the peace once again with our new member of Newton Presbyterian Church. The peace of Christ be with you. And let's give a round of applause welcoming Vanderlei. And on behalf of the congregation, we have a gift to you to celebrate this wonderful day and welcome you. Thank you. Beloved, continuing in our worship, we remember that God calls us to live lives of grateful generosity. Let us praise the giver of all good gifts through our offering today. We have many ways that you can respond to God's movement in your life. You can leave um, offerings in the plates that will be passed. You can use the QR codes in your bulletin. You can use the link on our website. You can use Venmo. Or you can just keep showing up and volunteer and use your physical gifts at any point in time. We welcome that, those offerings as well. So today's offering will now be given and received.
Let us pray. Holy God, you shower us with gifts so abundant that we cannot measure them all. You give us life itself and the power to befriend our companions in this world. Bless these gifts for the sake of all those in need. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. That's what I'm talking about. We have until May to perfect it, too. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gracie. I am the seminary intern here at Newton Presbyterian Church. And at this point in the service, uh, now is the time to lift up our prayers and our supplications to the Lord. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are to pray unceasingly and to not be afraid to raise our prayers. Um, so this is the time. I All you have to do if you'd like to lift up a prayer request or a celebration or a concern is to raise your hand and I'll bring the mic over to you. Please don't be shy. And we have a special birthday in the congregation. Miss, this week, Miss Esther has a birthday. Let's all raise it. Let's all give a hand to our friend Esther. Esther is a irreplaceable presence in our congregation, and we love her dearly. So happy birthday. All right. Other prayers, celebrations, concerns, supplications. Those of you who know Reverend Rob Mark, who grew up in this church and is pastor at Church of Covenant, um, he was suddenly uh, had to leave on, was it Thursday night? No, Friday morning, and was unable to participate in our worship services and is not back today because a dear friend of his from college um, has, has, is suffer dealing with cancer and the, has suddenly gotten tremendously worse, and Rob didn't know if the friend would survive through the weekend, but he couldn't wait until after Easter. So Rob left immediately and is with him. So we lift up Rob and his friend Tim and all who love and care for him. May God's light and love surround them. May comfort be and may there be healing in the relationship and that time together. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. The prayer request. Um, my girlfriend, Ivy, um, I shipped her off to Germany on Friday night, and while well, she landed there Saturday morning, um, she's had a, I mean, she's only been there for like, what, 36 hours now, so she's a little bit worried and concerned about adjusting. Uh, she doesn't start until Tuesday, because uh, Monday in Germany is also Easter Monday, a holiday. So, um, yeah, she's a little shaky right now, so just wishing her the best. For our friend Ivy, who just moved to Germany, that she will be settled in and feeling peaceful by the end of this busy holiday weekend. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. I'd like to um, ask for prayers for my dear friend Aaron, who um, is battling brain cancer and have they've decided to stop treatment and make her comfortable um and it was a surprise for her loved ones drew and Kristen, her lovely closest friends um i hope that they are able to support each other and be together in these last few moments of aaron's life um and yeah i hope that she is as comfortable as possible for our dear friend Aaron and Kristen and Drew and all the others who are with her. Um, may God give her comfort um, and a sense of peace as everyone navigates this time. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Kiddos, any prayer requests? Sometimes we have some good stuff. Any math test passed today? <laughs> Prayer requests, anyone? 
You can think on it. I'd like to lift up a prayer of celebration for what we just witnessed in welcoming Vanderlei into our congregation. Vanderlei has been such a light here um, for the past couple months, and we're so happy to have you uh, with us. So thank you. Thank you for being willing to open yourself up to joining our family. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. I know it's a bigger crowd today, so fair enough if people are feeling shy. And so with the prayer requests that have been lifted up and knowing that we always have more in our hearts, I invite you now to join me in the spirit of prayer. Risen Lord, in glorious joy we approach you today with our prayers. Be they concerns or celebrations or prayers of uncertainty, may we be filled with the bold, not half-hearted belief that you will hear them, and that you'll answer them. Be patient with us as we've been patient through this period of Lent if we don't hear our prayers answered immediately, and give us the hope and faith that we will see you move. And when we hear our prayers or see them answered, may we believe that it is you moving behind them. God, on this Resurrection Sunday that we've been waiting for all year, may we now more than ever turn our hearts outward and to love our community. May we sense where prayers are needed and where help is needed. And may we as Christians act in love and when necessary, use words. As we close this time in prayer, I invite us to join in the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us that is printed in your bulletin, the Lord's Prayer, praying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite you to please stand as you're able to sing our closing hymn, number 108, Christ is Alive in the Blue Hymnal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Celebrate this day of days, beloved. Rejoice in God, your Savior. Know the new life gifted through Jesus Christ. Shout your alleluias for all to hear. And as you go from here, may you go renewed and strong, knowing that the Lord is alive, almighty, and present. Look for the blessings that await you this week. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who celebrate and tell our story of hope. And may the truth of the empty tomb, the astonishing reality of Jesus' resurrection, keep you fearless and sure that you will see the resurrected one again and again in this life. May the power of God's endless love surround you and guide you this day and always. And let all God's people say together, Amen.